big three, three stocks, three charts, three trades. We're going to take a look at some tech names here. Ben Lichtenstein is with us to take us through the charts, here to take us through the trades. Jessica Inskip, Director of Product and Education at Options Play. Jessica, we see this sell-off today after a great week last week, but the comments by Jay Powell leading folks to believe that we may not even get the three cuts that they were truly expecting. Some were expecting five, six, seven. Um, what do you think about a sell-off like today? Would you consider it an opportunity? That's absolutely right. I, I agree with the previous guest who was talking about dollar cost averaging into these names. And actually my trades today, we're gonna to talk about how we can utilize options to even do that type of long-term strategy of utilizing this premium to add to your longer-term portfolio. I think something about Powell's comments, though, I'm glad you brought that up, Nicole, that hasn't really been discussed, is he stated, it's almost like he knew that the jobs numbers or had an inkling of what they were, but during the Q&A, he made it explicitly clear, maybe for about a brief moment, moment that he doesn't need to see an uptick in unemployment in order to be less restrictive. And that, I really hung on to that sentence, maybe too much, but I feel like the market was missing that component and the fear was this really great jobs numbers that may reaccelerate those inflationary concerns. But we've still got a lot more data until March. He's data dependent. So I that's what I'm hanging on to. And I think this sell-off for that reason, among others, is certainly a reason to add those healthy names to your longer-term portfolio. Okay. So let's start off with IBM. Is this a name that you've liked for some time and why is it on your radar today? Yeah, absolutely, Nicole. Have loved this one for some time. And this all plays out to that AI story. It's certainly driving the markets this year, much like it did last year. So I still expect some narrowness and we want to be in these names. But IBM takes down the barriers to entry. And that's very important to focus on as we're watching this AI narrative play out. There is going to be a shift now, and we're seeing it from the chips, from the software, now to B2B and application. And IBM helps with B2B application. They reported their earnings about a month ago. There was so much to like. The quarter was a beat beat all around. They had revenue growth that was led by that software and consulting, which is about 75% of their revenue base. So they saw margin expansion. They saw some, uh, I believe it was 5.1 billion of free cash flow, which is something we're looking for in these high restrictive Fed environments. And that allowed for financial flexibility to invest back in that company and make Watson X that growth company that we are looking for today in order to add it to my longer term portfolio. I'm going to sell an IBM March 22nd, 2024, 185 put earlier today that got me a premium of about 485 and the purpose of this trade is selling the cash secured put with the using the obligation to buy the shares but collecting the premium upfront to reduce my overall capital spent and risk exposure yeah what do you think of that uh ben lichtenstein welcome back and nice to see you and tell us about the chart here for ibm for sure, nicole uh, i agree with the bullish state stance on this one the chart's very supportive of uh, the narrative that Jessica just laid out there. Let's get into some of the price activity we've seen since earnings, a big move up, a little bit of price decay off that spike we saw. It was up to 196, and you can see most of the high conviction trade occurred in reaction to the news, and then you can see just the dust settling after. I like to look at these areas, these consolidation areas, and try and determine which way value is moving. We've got a 15-minute candle chart here. In this instance, you can see where we were balancing prior to the uh, imbalance that was created by the news. Uh, we were around 174, we're currently around 187, and so value is moving higher. Now this is on a 15 minute candle chart, so let's not get too focused on the granular. Let's take a step back and you're gonna see a similar pattern playing out as we add a little bit of time to this chart. We got a daily candle chart, and we're going all the way back to, we're talking uh, May of last year. You can see the areas of consolidation that have helped us determine again that this trend is moving up 125 133 143 160 here's that breakout we just looked at it does appear as if we're starting to accept the most recent move higher so this is really just solidifying and in line with that working assumption that we've had for a while now that ibm is uh trending higher values moving higher taking a step back to a weekly candle chart just adding more time on and just sort of again solidifying this working assumption that we are in a very bullish trend here now what really stands out to me is as we make our way through this 150 level, the area where we've kind of been teetering, going all the way back to, we'll call it beginning of 09, 2010, 
You can see as we build uh, energy through 150, what does it do? Well, it opens up a door for a retest that upper extreme we saw back in 11, 2012. So the bulls have their sights set on 200, 210, still holding below that right now, but a lot of energy into a test of that upper extreme here, Nicole. I see. Okay. Um, you know, any final thoughts here, Jessica, on IBM before we get to Meta? It's just interesting to see how it plays out. And really, I think it leads into NVIDIA. You know, it's later in the cycle when we get their earnings. I believe it's February 21st, and that gives us some demand. So there really is opportunity to add to the longer-term portfolio to see that, that thesis play out. All right. Yeah. You have a bullish stance in IBM. And what about Meta? Same idea? Absolutely. Yes, Nicole. Uh, they delivered on the year of efficiency. I wonder what the word of the year is going to be for Meta this year, but it was an incredible beat. But now they're aligning to AIs, and I, that's what I want to see within their overall goals and their strategy. And it's very interesting now that Apple released its Vision Pro, and there's going to certainly be some more demand for the metaverse. So now that Meta has had this really great earnings and we're going to see AI play out. I'm curious how they're going to follow suit now that we've got our hands on the Vision Pro and that's overtaking some of the hype. So I think there's opportunity there as well as we have fully seen how Meta can focus on specific key areas and then amplify revenue there. But let's focus on the AI story. They had some advanced AI products that they're focusing on for creators and businesses that led to reels and that led to more adoption and that led to the, the revenue exposure that we were looking for. They're making custom in-house AI chips. So they're actually part of that overall AI narrative story in addition to B2C and B2B. And if you want to make your own type of model. So that's an important component as well. And they have new personal computing devices that are all about AI interaction. So I expect them to see a late, be a leader within that entire AI scope, if you will. And they are looking at building open source type of products, which is going to help with that ecosystem adoption. And I think that's really important when we're just thinking of broader technology utilizing open source. So I'm excited to see what Meta does there. We've seen a blowout quarter, sell-offs, represent a great opportunity to add to your longer term portfolio. So same type of trade structure here, selling and at the money cash secured put are very close to the money that we could find about 45 day, days out, which puts us at March 22nd, 2024. That's a 460 strike put. It was about, I was able to get about 1670. So 1,670 altogether of upfront premium. It's a higher price stock. So naturally we're going to see a little bit more of a premium. My risk exposure is still substantial. It's, it's, it's equivalent to owning 100 shares but just reduced by that premium received up front of about 1670. Right, understood. Okay, and this is over the 45 days. Um, ben, your thoughts on this one? Yeah, based on price activity, the chart, Nicole, uh, Jessica's not the only one that's excited about Meta. And a very similar uh, depiction, a very similar story in terms of what we were talking about with IBM, longer-term trend to the upside. We'll get into that in just a second, but let's start with the more granular Five-minute candle chart, reaction to earnings, a very well-defined situation playing out here. We were balancing here prior to that uh, announcement here last week. You can see the reaction, too, and how we uh, quickly transitioned from a horizontal phase into a vertical phase. We've got five-minute candle chart. I've got two areas of balance identified. We were random chop-type trade into the news, and you can see the reaction to the initiative move out of balance here, and then you can see a new area of balance forming. Now, actually, as I look at this chart, you can even see this pattern kind of playing out a few times within this bigger picture, high conviction move that we saw to the upside here. But let's take a step back from the five minute candle chart here because I want you to see that this was actually playing out here. We're going all the way back to the lows that we saw down around, what was this, 320. We're going back to the beginning of December. And look at this. Again, we've taken a step back here. So we moved from a five minute candle chart to a 60 minute candle chart, looking at price activity since the beginning of December areas of consolidation that formed at higher and higher levels. And then also you can see this high conviction phase that we've broken out of balance here right now. The idea is that the bulls are going to be looking for a new area of consolidation to form at a higher level, solidifying the working assumption. We're trending higher, values moving higher. That wash, rinse, repeat, staircase type pattern is pretty easily identifiable here. Now, this is a, a real comeback story here. You're talking meta off the lows that we just looked at, I'm talking uh, end of 2022, around 95, because we were trending lower. And you can see that with the areas of value that have formed at lower and lower levels. We bounced around 130 in the fall of 
2022 into the end of the year around 95 and the bears really wanted to see high conviction trade to the downside value form at a lower level look what happened instead we took out 132 invalidation point here and everything else has been off to the races here this has been again a very bullish story here and uh, this stock here has performed well for those who stuck with it right understood and um and you still have this bullish stance here jessica final thoughts on on this trade you've put together Absolutely still have a bullish chance. I, I, I believe it is very important to think about the structure of the options trades today. It, there is a way to utilize options in more of a longer term income oriented view. And that's the structure that I've laid out with all of the trades today because sell offs represent that that broader opportunity to add companies to your overall bullish investment thesis on days that are pullbacks like today. Okay, next up, Amazon, which has been also a winner. It's up about 50%, hit a new 52-week high. Um, your thoughts on this one and why it jumps out at you as a winner? Yeah, absolutely. And, and still, again, that narrow-based AI theme that we're focusing on today. It's all about AWS. We really were waiting for AWS, I recall, for a couple of years to see and see that play out. And finally, we've got some positive trends, and management expects that to accelerate in 2024. There was definitely positives for the quarter with lots of backlog growth in, in Q4, which is up 41% year over year, which is incredible number speaking to the growth. And I love what CEO Andy Jassy, Jassy said. He emphasized the potential for AI to become a multi-billion dollar opportunity and that it's currently at a relatively small size. So there's a piece of a pie really to go around for everyone. And that's what I take away from that statement. So lots to really like about Amazon from this quarter, especially expecting that to accelerate like the CEO states and, and the numbers stated or seem to seem to going forward same type of trade structure here selling to open in amazon march 22nd 165 put again that's that 45 days that accounts for proper proper theta decay that was yielding about 395 so 395 total earlier today the premium that i'll receive up front maximum profit potentials when amazon stays above 165 like it is now but if it moves adversely i really reduced my break-even point and cushion pressure that's the intent of these type of trades I actually have a break even rather than the current price of around 169 to about 161 due to the structure of the trade. And that's what the key takeaway really for the trades that I submitted today are, despite the overall bullish investment thesis around AI that we talk about so much, Nicole. Yeah. And had you, you know, we'll talk about the 45 days and how you're coming up with this. But um, just quickly, Ben, your thoughts on the technicals, please. Yeah, you know, same trade structure as Jessica mentioned. I'm not surprised because a very similar pattern playing out on the chart here. You get a high conviction trade to the upside, a market that was in balance. You get the earnings, the news, and you can see, again, uh, almost identical depiction in terms of the other two names that we looked at, IBM and Meta. This is Amazon. Big move up here uh, last week in reaction to Earnings up to 174, 175, and you can see on this five-minute candle chart areas of consolidation that have formed at higher and higher levels. If I could get these areas of consolidation, there they are. 170 is the one that we're currently balancing around, as you can see, Nicole, and uh, just off that recent high. So very bullish pattern playing out here. Now, this is short-term charts. So let's not get too focused on the granular. Taking a step back, though, you can see a similar depiction in terms of the other two names that we mentioned. So again, not surprised to see a very similar approach towards trading it. Here you can see areas of value that have formed at higher and higher levels. In this instance, Nicole, we're going all the way back to earnings in October of last year. Stock was trading around 118, and you can see it looks like we're balancing again around 170. It looks to me like anything above 150 is still bullish. And I noticed this test of 145, which held, that's key. That's what the bulls are looking for, those retests that hold. This is a stock that's in a very much well-defined trend up, two steps forward, one step back. And much like what we just talked about in terms of meta, very much a comeback story because the stock had been trending lower. Amazon bottomed out in the fall of 2022, beginning of last year, down around this $80, $90, 100 level. And then you can see, while we were balancing around 95, what did the bears want? A new area of value to form at a lower level to solidify that working assumption that we're trending lower. Instead, what happened? Look at this. 124 was a reference point you were keeping an eye on if you're bearish. We got above it. Everything above that since has been bullish. So I can understand understand approach towards trading this one very similar to the other two names almost an identical chart here 
Yeah, understood. Thank you, Ben, uh, taking a look at those. And Jessica, final thoughts here. I know you have the 45 days on most of these trades. Um, how do you come up with that time period? Yeah, it's such a great question. So whenever we're selling options, I look at 45 days until expiration because the option is the price is derived from the underlying security, but implied volatility, and we are adding an expiration date. And the longer expiration period, the more expensive it's going to be. So I want to allow some time for that. We call it theta decay, but daily time decay to occur because these are neutral to bullish trades, and it allows me to buy it back at a lower price if the security just stays the same and that's the intent of it is we this is a time play in addition to a neutral and bullish view and then i'm i'm selling an at the money option which is just means the strike price is relatively close to the current market price that way if it does move adversely i'm okay adding it to my longer term portfolio gives me more premium is the takeaway yeah understood it's great to see you jessica thank you so much always for being on the show with us today in the big three jessica inskip of options play our own ben lichtenstein ibm meta amazon a great look at the big three today thank you both